There's nothing more to do now but pack for our trip to Cornwall. I'll put the car away if you meant what you said about taking a cab, Vicky. Yes, of course, Ginger. I'm old enough to find my own way home. It means I can finally have a few minutes alone with Bruce. <laughs> I can take a hint. Well, good night, all. Good night. Good night, Ginger. We'll send you a card from Cornwall. Oh, Bruce. I'm so glad we're going to Cornwall together. Just think of it. Three whole weeks to ourselves. I missed you, sweetheart. No, me too. I'm still a bit scared. You mean it took all that time to try it on? Not until I get you on the... Lean off shark fishing. <laughs> it's meant to. Now, darling, I have a lot to do, so see you at the crack of dawn. Hold on. <laughs> I'll just look out and see if there's a cab on the cab rank. Oh, thanks. Yes, there is one. Oh, good, he's seen me. He's coming oh, around. Oh, fine. Look, I'll pick you up at six o'clock then. Mm -hmm. Now, I hope you don't mind taking your car, but Ginger looks after mine like a baby. Anyway, it'll give him something to do while we're away. Good night, sweetheart. See you in the morning. On our way at last. I feel like a jailbird slipping away under cover of darkness. Everything worked like a shot. Except that you were both late. What happened? When Ginger left my flat, he took the car around to the garage to take out the radio. It took longer than I expected. When you'd gone, Bruce came down and gave me a hand. It was a tricky job. One slip of the screwdriver and they might have guessed what we were up to. And when we'd finished, we pushed the car out into the street and drove over to your place. But whoever's listening at the other end will realize Ginger isn't working on the car. Yeah, but that's where my actor friend comes in. But right now, he's in my flat making going away noises. At 5.30 tomorrow morning, he'll leave the flat, having tinkled his coffee cup loudly enough to ensure that everybody knows he's awake. And then at 8 o'clock, he'll go to Ginger's workshop and make car repairing noises for the next few days. It's strictly a non-speaking part, but the pay's good. It means we have half a day start, and that can make all the difference between success and failure. Oh, I hope your friend will be all right. He can look after himself. The important thing is that we have a head start. Well, let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> This is awful. One moment, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Lila. How is the seam operation progressing? According to plan, sir. Bruce Cabbage has turned down the job and gone to Cornwall for three weeks with the girl. Ginger Johnson is at the garage working on the car. Here are the monitor reports, sir. Oh, good. Um, good. Good. Why is there no report on the radio be planted in the girl's flat? According to Carl's report, he was on duty last night. The radio fell at 932, just after she returned home. Carl has gone round her flat to collect it. And what about the radio planted in her car? I was just going to test it, sir. There may be some difficulty in making contact, because it will have travelled some distance by now. And don't waste any more time. Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. At all? Yes. Well, what is this? You're quite sure? Then, well, I will tell him. Well? That was Carl. So? He says that the radio in the girl's flat has been tapped with, the wires have been cut, and her car is still in the garage. He asked the caretaker at her flat if he had seen her leave, and he said that she went away with Courage and Johnson last night, and that they were in Courage's car. I thought he gave up too easily. I should have guessed. He's on to us. All right, Mr. Courage. This is going to cost you and your friends your lives. <laughs>